Hi guys, welcome to this video in the series Java Tutorials for Beginners. In this video we're going to be looking at data types. So if you just open up your main BlueJ window again and go to a new class, let's give it a name and I'm just going to call it My Item. Click OK and if we just double click on the class and get rid of everything and let's just write it from scratch. So public class My Item, open in curly brace, close in curly brace. Let's have a constructor. So public my item parentheses opening curly brace closing curly brace. Let's have a method. So public and we'll just use int for now. So public int get value parentheses opening curly brace closing curly brace. So this is just a basic outline that we're going to work from now. So we've got our class, we've got our constructor, and we've got our method get value. Basically, data types are something in Java that you can assign to a variable to give it some kind of meaning. So, if, for example, I declare a field here, so if we have, say, a private int quantity, imagine that this um, item has some kind of a quantity associated with it. So, we've declared it here as an int. So, as we said, an integer is a whole number, so it makes sense for it to be um, an integer because you can't have a decimal of a quantity. What I'm going to do now is instantiate that variable. So we're going to say in the constructor, so in that's quantity equals 20. So we have 20 of that particular item. So what's going to happen now is if I just go out of this window and right click on it again because it's hashed, so we need to compile it. Ah, so in the Sec in, in the uh, method get value, because we've said here that we're going to return an int, we have to actually return something. So let's just return quantity. I was going to explain that next anyway, so let's just um, put that in anyway. So what this is going to say is um, now return whatever value is associated with that quantity. So we should expect to see 20 if we call this method get value. So I'm going to go out of this, right click, compile, and new my item. So as we said before, that's going to create an instance of this class on the object bench at the bottom here. So click OK. And you can see here now we've got this red box which represents our object, whereas this orange box represents the class. So if I right click on it and get value, because it's already been instantiated to 20 and we're now calling for that value, you can see now that it's of type int and it's set to 20. That's what's been returned. So double click on the class again and let's have a look at another data type. So this is an example of a primitive data type in Java, which is a, a set of reserved data types within Java. So another example is, for example, if you were using, um, if you wanted a, a, the price, you might not have it as an integer because an integer doesn't always have to be a whole number. It could be a decimal. It could be, you know, 11 pounds and 30 pence or something. So if I just have double price, change that to price. So, so now that we're instantiating price and also change that to price so that we're returning price and not quantity, but we, we don't have any more. So if I change this to, as we said, 11 pound 30, so 11.30, that wouldn't work with an integer, whereas it would work with a double. So if I just go out again, right click, compile, that didn't work because we left this as int. We didn't say that, it, we, we're saying here that basically this method's gonna return an integer. So it was expecting an integer in this return, whereas we provided price, which isn't an integer, it's a double. So that's, that's, that's probably a, a common mistake when you when you're first learning so if I just replace that with double and let's try again so compile and it's compiled so click on new item again click OK and now as we said the value of quantity right now at this point is uh, sorry not quantity uh, price because we set it price we've, we've created price now as 11 pound 30 so Right now at this point, the value of price is 11.3. So if I right click on it and get that value, 
which we said is going to return price, and we should return 11.30 or 11.3. And it's saying that it's a double. So that's another uh, primitive data type. Another one would be Boolean, which represents something that's um, a true or false value. So we could have this could represent perhaps in stock if it was something that um, if it was something that could be in stock. So we change this to in stock, and here we'd set true or false. So. You can see here that there's a slight difference as, uh, with before because we have true in blue, so it's it, it's a reserved it's something that's reserved in Java. So you don't need any speech marks around it or anything like that. If if it's a boolean, even though it's even though it's text, even though it's a, it's a string character set of characters, you don't need um, you don't need a set of speech marks around it. So if I now return here in stock. And now, because we're returning, um, as we did before, we left this as int, but we're now not returning a double, we're returning a boolean. So you'd need to change that to boolean. So if I ran, uh, was to run that again, then it would do the same thing. So an ex another example would be uh, char. So uh, char, oh, sorry, char, and a char could represent a uh, could represent a code perhaps so you may have a code equal to a so code might my in your um, item you might have a code that represents something that's a so again you'd have to do the same thing here so you'd have to change code char that's basically it for primitive types there is also another option as well um, string Whereas string is slightly different as it's, you can tell that it's got an up, if uppercase um, letter instead of um, lowercase because it's a class. It's not a, um, it is a primitive data type, but its difference is that it's actually a class unlike the others. So I'll probably talk more about this in another video, so I'm not going to mention any more about that, but that basically covers it for primitive data types in terms of a an object data type which is a second type of, of uh, data type that could be so that would basically be a class um, so for example um, that isn't string so for example it could be my item which is the class that we're currently in or so you might call that object you know, just as an example or perhaps if we had a class called car you might call it car and you might call it car object as the name of it. And the difference is here that you'd have car object equals, and whereas before you we had simply the value, so if it was an integer, it'd just be 10 semicolon. You wouldn't need anything else. Whereas if it's an object, we have to instantiate the object as part of its instantiation in the same way that an, an integer, as we said, was instantiated like that, and that was fine. For an object, we need to say equals new car parentheses and a semicolon. So this is now an instantiation of car object. And if we go here and say what's going to be returned is a car, because that's what now what we're going to return and say return car, a uh, car object, sorry. Let's go out of this. Let's compile. Okay, it's not allowing it because we haven't actually set up a car object. But say we we were to have a um, have a car class already, then it would work fine. But for this example, that's enough. I'm not going to go into any more detail. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe.